Welcome. In this short video, we'll talk about Data Warehouse Fast Track for SQL Server 2016, including the 85 terabyte reference architecture built on Dell EMC's PowerEdge R730 servers and SC7020 storage arrays. There are several advantages to using Data Warehouse Fast Track reference architectures. Whether you use the reference architecture as is or just as a starting point, you can get to the deployment phase of your project more quickly. Instead of having to start with a blank sheet of paper, you can start with reference architectures that have been verified by both Microsoft and Dell EMC. By using a Data Warehouse Fast Track reference architecture, you can be confident that the hardware you're buying works well together and is optimally configured for a Data Warehouse workload. Dell EMC offers a variety of Data Warehouse Fast Track reference architectures, giving you the choice and flexibility that you need to build the right data warehouse solution to meet the needs of your business. The process used by Dell EMC to build a data warehouse fast track reference architecture is fairly straightforward. First, a design target is defined, and the hardware needed to meet that target is selected. Using the data warehouse fast track testing harness provided by Microsoft, performance tests are run in an iterative fashion. After each test run, results are analyzed and the configuration is tuned until optimal results are achieved. After the final results are reviewed and approved by Microsoft, the configuration becomes a certified Data Warehouse Fast Track Reference Architecture. A white paper detailing the reference architecture is then published on Dell Tech Center. Every Data Warehouse Fast Track Reference Architecture receives a certificate from Microsoft. On the right-hand side of the screen is the certificate for the Dell EMC 85 terabyte reference architecture. One key metric on the certificate used to describe the size of the reference architecture is rated capacity. When evaluating different reference architectures, it's important to understand this metric. Rated capacity is the lowest of two ratings, one based on storage capacity and the other based on performance. The performance rating is based on the results of I.O. and CPU stress tests that are run against a SQL Server Data Warehouse database. Tests are run against a database using traditional row store indexes and against a database using column store indexes. The primary measurement used for the row store tests is data throughput, commonly expressed as megabytes per second, whereas the measurement used for the column store tests is query throughput, expressed as queries per hour per terabyte. The capacity rating is based on the usable space on the storage device. Depending on the size of the configuration, 10-15% to 15 of the available space is reserved for free space. Space reserved for TempDB will be 25-30% to 30 of the data space, again depending on the size of the configuration. And lastly, the rating is based on using SQL Server compression, assuming a 5 to 1 compression ratio. Because compression is used, rated capacity really refers to the amount of data that can be supported by the reference architecture rather than the size of the database that can be supported. One principle behind the Data Warehouse Fast Track certification is balancing the performance between the processor and the storage. This balance helps control costs, so you won't overspend on processors that mostly wait for data to be retrieved from disk, and you won't overspend on storage performance that the processors simply can't use. To demonstrate that the processors can keep up with the storage, Average CPU utilization needs to be at least 60% during testing. The I.O. workload consists mainly of large block sequential reads. While there are some writes generated by the validation test, those are mostly done in TempDB. The Data Warehouse Fast Track reference architectures are designed differently than traditional OLTP systems in that they are optimized for the large range scans that are common for Data Warehouse workloads. This means focusing on throughput rather than IOPS. Let's take a look at the 85 terabyte reference architecture. All of the details about this reference architecture are available in a white paper on Dell Tech Center. You can download the white paper using the link in the description of this video. We'll start by looking at the hardware components. A PowerEdge R730 using Intel Broadwell processors with a terabyte and a half of memory provide the computing power for the reference architecture. This R730 is a dual socket 2U server with two Intel Xeon E52697 V4 processors, providing SQL Server a total of 72 logical processors. 
The storage array is an SE7020. This 3U storage array is populated with 25 1.92 terabyte read intensive SSD drives, leaving five open slots for future expansion. A dual fabric fiber channel network using a pair of Brocade 6505 fiber channel switches provides 16 gigabit connectivity between the server and the storage array. To get the high level of throughput needed to achieve an 85 terabyte rating, eight ports of 16 gigabit fiber channel is used in both the server and in the storage array. If we dig a little deeper into the storage configuration, we see that the SC7020 is a single tier system. The disk folder is configured using single redundancy with a 512K page size. To protect against drive failures, two drives are reserved as hot spares, leaving 23 active drives. The read cache and write cache are set in accordance with best practices for all flash arrays. Read cache is left at the default setting of enabled, and write cache is disabled. This reference architecture also takes advantage of the SC series ability to use multiple RAID types on the same set of disks. Using custom storage profiles, RAID 5.9 is used for the SQL Server data volumes, and RAID 10 is used for all other volumes. To help balance the workload across the controllers in the array, the SQL Server data and TempDB volumes are evenly distributed between the two controllers, meaning half of the volumes are mapped using the first controller, and the other half are mapped using the second controller. For those environments with more stringent uptime requirements, the 85 terabyte reference architecture is also offered in a high availability configuration. This configuration leverages a SQL Server failover cluster instance installed on a Windows Server failover cluster, which requires a second identical R730 server and four additional SFPs in each fiber channel switch. When setting up the SQL Server volumes, they will need to be mapped to each node of the cluster. While it's not required, it's easier to use a cluster server object when mapping those volumes. And those volumes will need to be configured as cluster disks. Dell EMC has created several other data warehouse fast track reference architectures, in addition to the 85 terabyte reference architecture that we just talked about. This table provides a high level summary of those reference architectures which also use SE series storage arrays. A white paper describing each of those reference architectures is available on Dell Tech Center. Even though the reference architectures in this table use SQL Server 2014 instead of SQL Server 2016, they can be used to help implement a data warehouse solution in your environment. In this video, we talked about Data Warehouse Fast Track for SQL Server 2016 and the 85 terabyte reference architecture created by Dell EMC. For more information on how to get the most from your SE Series storage array, including the white paper for the 85 terabyte Data Warehouse Fast Track reference architecture, visit dell.com/storage-resources. Thanks for watching.